Carter. I'm from Derby. I've been here for 16 years and I am a vegan activist. I've been vegan for a year and a half and I've been vegetarian for six years and I fluctuated between the years I'm going vegan. When uh, people don't associate anything to do with animals, so they don't eat meat, um, they don't have milk, uh, anything to do like that really. Hardest food to give up, uh, any type of meat to be honest, probably steak. <laughs> I'm a steak lover. <laughs> Challenges of being vegan. Um, if it's going through now, it'll be. I'm so used to eating meat, so used to having milk. And, uh, I'm sure there's alternatives out there, but you know, I, I wouldn't know where to start, to be honest. Being vegan isn't hard at all, especially when you know why you're doing it and who you're doing it for. Um, it's once you've seen all the documentaries and you see what happens to the animals, you, it's pretty easy to decide not to eat it. It's easy accessible in the supermarkets, their ranges are massive free from sections now, and there's loads of recipes out there and vlogs, and you can make vegan food so quick. Protein. So where do we get our protein from? This is probably the number one question, and we get it from our entire diet. Everything we eat contains protein from breakfast, lunch or dinner, our oats, tofu, peanut butter, every green vegetable out there. Um, there's beans and legumes. So we get it, there's no deficiency of protein in our diet at all. When you consider what meat protein does now and what it does for our health, it has been linked to cancer, it is high in saturated fat, cholesterol, and you're basically just eating chemicals that are pumped into the animal that is not protein honey. So the definition of veganism is to not exploit any animals or animal cruelty. With honey, the bees are exploited. They're enslaved in cages. Um, they're forced to harvest honey at the wrong time of year. They gather it all up from thousands of places all over the world, harvest it, they fan it with their wings until it's the right consistency, it creates honey, and then one day, while they're out, we just rob the whole hive. People seem to think that cows need to be milked, but they absolutely do not need to be milked. You don't see a woman walking around just producing breast milk without a baby. It's exactly the same for cows. Cows produce milk, solely for their calves. So she's, she's forced to be pregnant by a human. She's kept pregnant for nine months, she's nurtured her baby, and she literally produces milk only for her calves. She's put under a machine which is constantly, constantly pumping her milk out until it's totally dry. And then all that milk was actually made for her baby, yet we're drinking it as humans. It's really weird, it's not right. With the dairy products, people think that because you don't have to harm the cow in the process, that it's okay, but it isn't. How a cow goes through her life is awful. So dairy cows from birth are raised as dairy cows alone. They are put into a machine when they're old enough called a rape machine, and a human then puts his hand up her anus opens it with a metal implement and it injects bull sperm into her vagina. So it is called a rape rack and that is how a dairy cow produces a calf. When she's pregnant, she has the calf, she has a male or a female, whether it's a male or a female, the female is ripped away from her from birth, a day old. The male is then sent off for 16 weeks into a container for veal and then he's either slaughtered if he's not good enough or he is slaughtered and killed and all his meat is veal. How is raping a cow to make her pregnant and ripping her babies away okay just for cheese or milk that we have every day? Also people think that free range eggs are okay and they're not. There's nothing free range about eggs. England alone has over 10 billion eggs produced a year. There is no way that they do that solely with the goodness out of their heart. They don't let the hens run around freely and nurture them and look after them in little fields. So they're kept within a square meter and per one square meter you have about nine or 10 hens. That's free range. 
so you can compare free range to caged and they're not better off at all. So people think you can't be vegan and be an athlete, but it's totally not correct. There is tons of Olympic vegans out there and strong men who are vegan. So you don't actually need meat to perform at a high quality. My name's Gary Trickett and I'm the owner and manager of Healthy Root. What we've seen over the last few years is um, uh, uh, particularly sports people coming in and they've they're moved away from whey proteins to the plant source proteins. So um, what, the reason they're doing that is they're looking at where the milk that makes the whey in the protein is, is being sourced. So a lot, of, uh, a lot of that milk is coming from places like Thailand, uh, uh, overseas, so it's got long air miles, but also people are questioning how that cow has been brought up. They're questioning the, uh, the amount of antibiotics and uh, growth hormones that are being pumped into the cow to make it produce milk continually. So um, people are, are wanting a clean product as well as wanting a vegan product and that's where we're finding that the plant-based products are selling better for us. We've always sold things like peanut butters, we've always sold chocolate without milk products in. But um, what we've found in the, the last couple of years is that people are coming in wanting vegan products for a whole raft of reasons. So they're looking at the animal we welfare issue. We're also finding people who uh, want to eat a clean product who want traceability in their products. We're also finding that people want their supplements to have no animal products in. So uh, we're finding that our sales of things like flaxseed oil in a capsule is going up as opposed to cod liver oil. So the environmental damage that eating meat has is it's massive. It has over 50% of global greenhouse gas emissions are due to animal agricultural farming over 50%. A mere 13% is gas and trans transport and aeroplanes and cars, not as the world leads you to believe. It is 91% of deforestation is purely down to animal agricultural farming. Nearly one to two acres of rainforest is gone every single minute just to grow soya for the crops and for the food that then goes towards all the animals. We could actually cure world hunger if we didn't do all of that for the animals. It's the leading cause of dead zones in the ocean. So people forget about the sea, they forget about the fish, they just think they're limitless and they're endless supply. But we actually have dead zones in our sea already. Scientists have actually predicted that by 2050, we will have no fish in our ocean. Stats say that people who eat meat daily produce 2.8 tonnes of carbon dioxide daily. You could watch What the Health, Cowspiracy, Food Choices, Forks Over Knives, and the ones that I think everyone does really need to watch are things like Earthlings, Land of Hope and Glory. Veganuary has had a positive impact on our business. Um, we found that uh, over the last couple of years, the number of people talking about it has, has increased. The number of people that have come in in the, the, the month of January, we've seen increases there. And obviously on our, on our social media platform, we've seen there's a lot more interaction during that, that month. And, and really what's, what's positive is the following months afterwards, it, it, it has tailed off, but there has been an increase in that. Maybe just put back on your meat ever so slightly, or even if it means going vegetarian first, the amount of animals that you're saving just by doing that and what you'll be doing for your health and the environment is more than anybody could ask for.